Hello and welcome to Pirelli number no. 5 by Villa Lobos. This is part 1 and we're going to dive into the first section and check out its wonderful chord shapes, the cello melody and its unusual time signature. So let's dive straight into the last prelude that Villa Lobos wrote that we have for guitar, Prelude number no. 5. Hello and welcome to micro study number one for prelude number five. First thing to point out straight away off the bat is the inner voices. We're in the time signature of six four, so that's one two three four five six one two three four five six, and we have inner voices on one two three five six, and those are the so it's one two three four six. That's bar one. It almost gives it a slight waltz feel when you put everything together. Be very, very aware of it because those voices go throughout the first two sections of this piece. The only time that it doesn't pop up is in the third section where we're here in. A. Alrighty, micro study number two. Let's have a look at those chord shapes. So we have half bar at seven, fourth finger on a D, open D, third finger on a C sharp, and then what's going to happen is your third finger is going to slide down to the B so that you can get into the next chord shape, the A7 with the suspended nine onto half bar at fret five and then a fourth finger on the G. So your first bar looks like this. From there, you're gonna move down to second position, a five string bar, B minor chord shape, nothing too difficult there. Your fourth finger is then gonna release and go on to the E at fret five. Second finger obviously is on the D, and then your second finger is going to guide down into second position. Bar comes off, open E, first finger on the E here, open low E string, and that needs to be a third finger. It's super important so that you can get into the next chord shape. So that is going to be key to this entire prelude, making sure that your fingers are smart fingering choices so that you can look ahead and get into the next chord shape. Connecting the dots from those first two bars it looks like this. Half bar seven, three, inner voice, three guides down. Inner voice, four, you can do a violin slide to connect these chords. B minor, inner voice, To the next bar. The next bar is A13 and I am using my first finger again for a very good reason and you'll see in the next chord. So second finger on the F sharp, open string, and then you're gonna slide and laser ahead to the G on the second fret. The G is not there in first position so don't do this. That is not correct, it is so that you can get into the next chord shape. First finger is on a nine. I have fingers two, three, four on C natural, F sharp, B with an open A. You're then gonna slide or guide fingers two and three up into 11 and 12, and then your first finger is gonna come on on the A. This finger has to stay down. In fact, I would suggest you leave all of them down. And then your right hand is gonna do the selecting there to change the chords. So nice and slowly. And that is how the back end of that bar goes. It is probably the most technically challenging of this first uh, line of music, but it is easily doable once you take that G away from the first position and put it up here with the first finger. So again, nice and slowly, bar three. And 
notice I'm leaving the strings resonating around. I'm making sure I'm not doing this. No cut off. Stretching out. And then we're into the next micro study. So all together, nice and slowly, this looks like. to this super super important your right hand find control to make sure that you get this melody singing out above the accompaniment and that your inner voices are very very clear so that you got that one two three four five six feeling going on as you play through this right let's check out the next micro study Welcome to the next micro study. So we left it up here at 10th fret. We're in a half bar with an open D string. And we have the fourth finger has stayed on from the previous bar. Exposing the D, stretching up to that high F sharp, and then you're gonna slide down into the next chord. This is in the score, so make sure that you Bring it out again. So slide into that next chord. So here we have two, three, four at fret nine. It's not a half bar. And then into a half bar. Two, three, four. Not a half bar. Into a half bar at seven. Stretching out for that D, slide down into a half bar at five, and then the half bar is going to shift down exactly the same fingers, nothing changes. Stretching up for that B, and again connecting the melody. So you should get this. wonderful melody should just pop out above. And then we're into the next micro study. All right, welcome to the next micro study. So we're picking it up from the first position with the C natural. into where your first finger is on a C natural and your second finger is on an F sharp. I would suggest fourth finger on the G and then first and second fingers on C sharp and F sharp. And then what's gonna happen is your first finger is gonna float straight into the fifth position so that you can hit D and F with the third and fourth fingers at seven. And then the melody is gonna float down the third string first and then on to the fourth string. Fingers four, two, and one, and then we're back into the top of the piece. The main thing here is obviously smart fingering again, but also look ahead. This is nice and easy. Start thinking about fifth position. Five. Thumb takes the melody down, third string. Second finger guides, fourth finger stretches out. Middle voice. To back into the beginning. So all together, these few bars look like. Now the magic happens with the right hand. There is no two ways about it to get the melody on the top strings to ring out, to get the melody in the middle, and then the melody in the tenor. These fingers need to drop down so that they're not too loud, so you're not doing. So 
controls. Make sure that your right hand find control is on point for this micro study. Alrighty, welcome to the next micro study. So this is a repeat of material. I am just going to crack on down it until we get to where the music, where the new music happens. So here we go. Back to the first couple of bars. <laughs> Here we go. First finger is going to clear the fifth string, stay in a half bar position. Second finger up, second finger down. So it's just an F minor chord with an A in the bass. Now the next change is quite important. Your third finger is going to go up to the G sharp, your fourth finger is going to go onto the B, your second finger onto a D, and your first finger is going to stretch out for that. F sharp there. So this is just an E major 7 chord with a G sharp in the bass, which is going to move into the A. Now, you have a couple of choices here. The easy choice is to move that second finger down, staying in first position, but then recognizing that you have a massive jump to get that second finger from there to the top of the guitar at the A sharp. So that is the first set of fingerings. And it's the standard set of fingerings, actually. It's not impossible, it's just going to take a little bit of practice to get that fingering down. But there is an alternative where you play the first half of the bar, and then come up into fifth position so that you're already there for the next chord shape. The next chord shape is really, really interesting. We have the second finger on six, bar across five for the G, third finger on the C sharp, and then we have a fourth finger on an F sharp. What's going to happen is your fourth finger is then going to slide up, all fingers off, and then we have an open G and E around the high G. And then you're going to just float down to an F sharp. So it's a, it's a fantastic idea. Now what I would suggest is instead of using a third finger like I just did there, uh, putting your second finger in so that you can slide back down into the B minor at the next bar. It is possible to keep that second finger down, as you can hear. Um, whether you leave it down or not is your choice. but. If you do leave it down, you're going to need a third finger there at the F sharp. And then into the B minor, which is again a, a, the standard fingering. I will leave the choice up to you. So we then have down to second position, B minor. Just drop your second finger to nail the G and to expose the C sharp. to a half bar at three, fourth finger on, fourth finger stretches out, and then we're back down to open strings. Stop in the bass if you can, fourth finger on the G, and then here we go again, C natural F sharp, C sharp F sharp, and here I would suggest using a hinge bar because the next chord is going to be here. It is possible to play it down here but it's just not as easy. Let's take a look at those few bars nice and slowly. I would seriously suggest practicing them in chunks. Chunk one, chunk two. Just using your fourth finger there, and then chunk three. Then seamlessly trying to knit those three chunks together. So chunks one and two, three and four, and then chunks two and three, and then the whole lot. That is the best way to approach this and really, really think about your left hand fingering. Quick interruption here, hopefully you're enjoying this video. There are a ton of new videos coming to this channel. So if you are, consider hitting the like button and maybe even subscribing to the channel. You will get first in on the new Deans, the new Brower, and a little bit more of Villalobos. Right, let's
let's dive straight back into this prelude. Welcome to the last micro study. So we've left it up here, fifth fret with a hinge bar, so that we can move into seven. Right hand doing the selecting on strings six, three, six, four, three, two. Melody moves down the sixth string into first position, bar across again. Now I would suggest using your fourth finger on the A, third finger on the G, and then leaving your second finger down as a pivot. First finger again. Second finger slides down as a guide. Open A, stop in the E, and then we're back in, second finger back up to a bar at the second fret for that D major. That is a lot. So my fingering nice and slowly. Seven fret bar, four, three, one. Very, very fluid shift. Notice that it's a half bar with a second finger on, so it's a B minor seven. You can do an A if you want to, but I prefer leaving the full bar across six strings. Stretch up for the A third finger for the G, and then I'm, my first finger is already prepped and ready for the F sharp, I've just got to release the bar. Open E, first finger, first finger guides down, second finger slides to the C sharp, open E, open A, stopping, stopping with the side of my thumb, and then your second finger is going to slide back up, to that D. And what's going to happen is you're going to slide finger three up into that last chord. Now there are actually two ways of playing this last chord. This is the best way. It gives the best sonority, but it is possible as well to play it like that. I prefer this. So again, very, very clever fingering is used here to get that. The main focus being the main focus that's where the melody is and again it's in the lower register of the cello I think. So alternative fingering. <clears throat> it is possible to play this at second fret. Bar across second fret, third finger, C sharp, first finger, staying there. Now you either use an open string for the A and then your third finger up to the G and then your first finger flips up or Fourth finger, third finger, first finger, and then it's the same fingering as before. The choice is yours, it's wherever you find it most comfortable. I prefer... But not everybody is going to go that way. And that literally is, believe it or not, the end of the first section, but also the end of the piece. Now a couple of musical um, suggestions here. This chord, for the first time, when it ends A, can be rolled. And I say that because I have pretty much rolled the first chord. Of every three in my interpretation, so that it makes sense then that this chord is into a frozen chord. However, on the end, I would suggest that you reverse this just for this last bar to give it a little bit of a ooh, something different moment. Frozen to rolled on the end. My interpretation really takes into account the second and fifth beat in the voices. They are not rolled, they are straight. I have made sure of it unless it is impossible to keep them straight. Again, that is a suggestion, and I would highly recommend that you experiment with rolling and freezing chord shapes as they move through this piece. Thank you very much for staying until the end. This has been brought to you by ClassicalGuitarRocks.com. There are a ton of videos and lessons up there now. Most of them are free. It is also the only place on the internet that you can currently learn 
all 12 of Villalobos's etudes and all of his five preludes. So if you want to get in on the action on modern classical guitar music and learn it and learn it well, head over to classicalguitarrocks.com for some six string inspiration today.